Uh, our next topic is one that you can attest to for sure. Yep. Uh, so I'll ask you in a two-part question. Are coding boot camps worth it? And what was your experience attending these facilities? Mm, yeah, so uh, I'll just be real here and say that uh, I had a great time for the most part. But for me, the timing was just off. As far as my entry into the program, uh, my maturity and even just situational awareness as to knowing where I was going in life at the time uh, was just severely lacking. Uh, I was young at the time, man. I was I was probably like 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that I had, had I known what I, I'd signed up for in detail and how it would affect my life, bruh. I'd say it's a double-sided coin. But overall, I'd say it's worth it. Not from a programming aspect, but it has opened my eyes in so many ways as far as just life lessons. So, you know, stuff like how to negotiate in the job market, learning how to manage money, and learning that debt is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, things like choosing the right career path mm -hmm. and being diligent and consistent in any job that you have to survive and thrive in your work area and life. Things like that, looking back on it, is what made my experience worth it. There it is, man. Yeah, that's deep, man. <clears throat> uh, so let's break this down here. Uh, tell me about the experience from the day you signed a contract to maybe the first two, three weeks of boot camp. All right. Uh, so essentially, I signed my financial life away to a company named Skills Fund. And this was about uh, a 13K loan. Mm -hmm. uh, fast forward about three weeks in, and we're learning about JavaScript, and they give us an opt-out grace period. So if you feel like this boot camp thing isn't your cup of tea, you can back out and get your money back. Mm, so... This time is more like a fill-out process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the material started to pick up around week three, week four. And uh, if you were falling behind through the material, the instructor would uh, try to work with you to get you up to speed. But at this point, it's a very personal decision to opt out. And uh, I'll say a key lesson learned during my time is that during these classes, and even in this line of work, you really need to know the material. Yep. You need to know how things function at bare minimum, a foundational level, because just copying and pasting code, even if it works, is going to hurt you in the long run. And I think every programmer can attest to that. Mm, letting them know, man. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, look, man. Shh. Guilty! <laughs> I mean, I, I'm self-taught with obvious guidance from friends in the industry, but man, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll definitely hit up Stack Overflow to see some examples of whatever I'm trying to trying to figure out Yep. in case I need a solution or something. Yep. Uh, I'll even be on uh, Hacker Rank or uh, Free Code Boot Camp, so... Yeah. Yeah, I mean those are good resources, um, but you gotta know you gotta know how this stuff works, because uh, the gaps in a developer's knowledge are really gonna come back to bite you in the butt, especially when interviews start coming in. Uh, so, uh, tell me about your pro portfolio and the quality of the content you're making, and how that has helped you now that you've graduated. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we made a total of seven apps for our portfolios. Uh, these included a budget app, a bug tracker, shopping cart app, uh, a mobile car finder app, mm -hmm. a online blog, RESTful APIs, and 
C sharp based console games. Uh, all these played a pivotal role as far as learning how to code and and getting that real world experience with the work in the field. Of course. However, there were some hiccups with the execution on these apps. Mm. So my cohort didn't finish the shopping cart app. And because of that, we had limited time or I'll say a much shorter time period to learn about SQL and mobile app design dealing with Xamarin and stuff like that. Mm, okay. All right. So uh, you're going through the class. You're creating these apps for your mm -hmm. portfolio. Now tell me about the interactions you were having with your, your classmates and, and even the graduation process. Yeah. Uh, so the interactions were comparable to like a, a small college classroom. Uh, my cohort was pretty small. We had about, mm, give or take, 10 people uh, attending the classes. Okay. So we we got to know each other pretty well. Uh, they also had other cohorts in attendance in other classrooms across the hall. Uh, so at, at most, at least between other cohorts, you could have casual conversations in the lunch hall and go drink a gallon of coffee and hot chocolate from this crazy self-serve drink maker that they had in the hall. Uh, but I remember one conversation I had with two other guys who, who loved the lift. Really? And uh, they were debating on whether or not you could gain size doing uh, solo calisthenics versus weights. And uh, so you get a good mix of people in these classes to interact with. Mm, I bet. Uh, you get a wide variety of skill ranges. Uh, like myself, I was completely new. I was a complete noob to coding. And uh, there were some others that were already well-versed in the industry. So everyone is kind of coaching each other up and mm -hmm. ultimately learning how to code together. Yep. Uh, for example, I, I met a friend named Tim, and he was having some trouble understanding how the object-oriented programming works. And uh, so I pulled him to the side, and we happened to be working on the budgeting app at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just went through and broke down each line of code uh, as we were reading it together and kind of explained to him how the code in Visual Studio was translated to what he was seeing on screen in yeah. the actual program. Yeah. And uh, long story short, after hours, we ended up going out to sushi for dinner that night. So, I mean, there's plenty of opportunities to learn and grow and give and receive help along the way. Mm, that's dope, man. That's dope. Lots of ways to learn, guys. Uh, now, tell me about the graduation experience and, you know, what went down? Uh, well... Nothing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nothing. Man. Uh, I, I'm serious. Like we, we'll get into this later. But uh, this goes back to the timing on on when I attended Dakota Foundry. I mean, they gave us a firm handshake and a T-shirt that reads fluent in five languages, and that was it. Now, I will say that the material is really nice. Uh, it's one of those slim fit muscle shirts. You know, I walk oh, around yeah, man. looking like Popeye in that shirt or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, man. Uh, that's one of the areas that they have improved on. So now if you go in, you're still getting the shirt. But now you also get a little plaque that has, you know, a little certification of completion uh, that shows you completed the class, obviously. And they also changed up the contracts and I'm going to call them contracts for lack of a better term. Okay. But uh, as an update for what happened previously, they changed up their loan process. So now you can go through the class, graduate, and they won't make you pay that loan back after you get your first job. Mm. Now, I know this personally because I have a friend named Mark who went in after me. And we went through middle school and briefly through college together. But uh, these are the updates that Coder Foundry are making. But keep in mind that these things can vary depending on what boot camp you actually attend. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm mad. I am mad because uh, 
I would have liked to have something to hang my hat on, so to speak, mm -hmm. instead of just a t-shirt, but that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> They're getting the paper and the bands, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, moving right along here, past graduation, going into the job market, what is your experience with the job placement services that Coder Foundry has to offer? Mm, yeah, so... Job placement services were good. Uh, they were run by Natasha, and she would call us in to do a demo of our portfolio to kind of collect data for our strong suits so she could uh, get on the phone with recruiters and let them, let them know what we, we were capable, capable of. Mm -hmm. um, now, let me preface this by telling you this at the time. At the time, I was 19 years old. Okay, so I'm still learning and growing myself. Sure, sure. Uh, so we get a contact out in Whiteville, where my grandparents stay, mm -hmm. but I wasn't aware of that fact at the time. Oh, no. Oh, so no. So I'm having the interview with said contact for the role, and I made the mistake of telling the recruiter that I didn't know the area mm, that's a rookie mistake and you know i'm telling my dad what's going on in the job hunt process yeah and he tells me my granddad stays out there and i can go stay with him and go to work mm. so we get back with natasha and ask her to check in with the recruiter and she could never get a hold of that contact again. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm sorry to hear no, that, man. I know, it feels bad, man. But uh, placement services are there if you need them. And regardless, you're going to have recruiters calling you up anyway for jobs. So it's not a huge loss as it pertains to my situation. Mm -hmm. In fact, to this day, I still get a whole lot of offers from recruiters <clears throat> mm. so to wrap up the segment here uh if i were to enroll into coder foundry for this 18 week course would you recommend it all right uh i'll answer it like this uh if if you're someone who is completely new to code and you have the financial means to pay without going into debt then yes all right, it's a good foundation to a new career, and it can even spring you into a new career right from the jump. Um, if you have to get a loan to attend, make sure you can cover yourself on the back end of things, financially speaking. Uh, in fact, I had a friend who went in, graduated, has his portfolio and all, but no job. Mm. In fact, he's now working at a fast food restaurant. I don't know if he's still pursuing programming or not, but, you know, shout out to him. He's still grinding out there, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the reality. That is the reality. This stuff is hard, guys. Yes. But uh, it pays to get in the door. It yeah. really does. Uh, another thing, if you're coming out of college, you know, you got your degree in hand, uh, this boot camp can help. But there's not going to be much you probably don't already know. Again, you're working with all skill levels here. So you can take on a mentor-like role for other students and, and build your portfolio at the same time. But if you know your stuff already, it'll be a breeze. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, last question here for this particular topic, guys. And... This will be the longest segment for the show. Uh, but here we go here. Last question. Do you have any regrets? Hmm. Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Because uh, looking back on it, uh, I can see all the, all the mistakes that I went through. Like not knowing a lot about interviews or even some unfortunate events. Like the fact that Coda Foundry went bankrupt right after I graduated, which resulted in losing our servers and portfolio work. Uh, and another thing about the portfolio, guys, let me just go ahead and say this here. 
uh, yes, it is critical that you learn to code by building your portfolio. Yes. And yes, your portfolio is a helpful tool to showcase during an interview. But speaking from my own experience, employers aren't even looking at your portfolio. As a matter of fact, here's what's going to happen. They're going to slap you in the back with a back-end or front-end programming test. And if you pass, great. But if you don't, you're out. It is as simple as that. Mm. So it's, it's kind of like the uh, college debate where everyone thinks the college degree is the golden ticket to a job. Right. And in this case, it's going to be your portfolio. Right. Yeah. I mean, and if you ask me about regrets, it's hard to say because I still have the knowledge. Yeah. But I don't have the job in the field or the fact that I, I have my portfolio locally, but it's not online for employers to to see. Mm. So it's two sides of a coin here. Uh, Coder Founder gave me a great foundation as far as programming goes, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to have to take that a whole lot further, I believe now, to actually get in the door. Because uh, as it stands right now, even uh, entry-level jobs that are posted aren't actually entry-level. Really? If that makes sense. Wow. So most jobs that you're going to be applying for once you get out of you know the boot camp that you're in or for this for this instance code of foundry you're going to have to do some extra work and you're going to have to really step up your game outside of code of foundry uh to land a job definitely uh last thing i want to say here uh if you're on the fence about attending code of foundry or any other coding boot camp versus going to college to study for coding and programming. Um, I'll say that they're both very identical. Um, so if you can pay for college with cash, that's great. If you can pay with cash for your boot camp, that is great as well. Um, and vice versa, you're still going to be paying a loan whether you go to college or a boot camp also keep in mind if you're transitioning from high school to college but you're not there just yet you're probably in your uh sophomore junior year of high school and the boot camp route is not an option for you at the moment definitely look into some free resources online there's a whole lot of them guys yes uh we named yes. off a few hacker rank Codility, uh, Free Code Bootcamp. All of these are great resources to use to get a good start and a good foundation under you. Yes. Uh, these resources can be used to supplement any future career paths in coding. Wow. So uh, there you have it, folks. Uh, from the aspiring developer himself, this has really given me some insights for these coding boot camps, man.